Jesse James, Joe Hunter, Silas Eisen. These are names that are synonymous with Wichita Mountain history and lore. Probably the most infamous story you'll hear involves the legend of the Iron Door Cache. Everyone has an opinion or a theory on this matter, and this video contains mine. As the years have passed by, people swear they have witnessed the Iron Door with their own eyes. Let's take a look at the stories, rumors, and facts and discuss why I think the outlaw Jesse James and the famed Iron Door legend are mutually exclusive. I see four possibilities here. One, the Iron Door is nothing but a legend that has morphed drastically over the years. Two, it is a true story but doesn't actually involve the Wichitas. Perhaps it factually takes place in another portion of Oklahoma or even another state as the legend is popular in several other places. Three, it is true and the treasure was found by the government perhaps. Four, it is true and all the treasure hasn't been found. Maybe the cave entrance is concealed by fallen boulders. There are also conflicting stories pertaining to the source of the hidden treasure hidden in the Wichita Mountains. For instance, was the treasure of early Spanish and minor origin or outlaw origin? The first sightings of the Iron Door, said to be secured by heavy chain and lock, were in the early 1900s during settlement. The Oklahoma version of this legend seems to take place in two main areas of the current day Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. One in the southern portion of what is now Charon's Garden Wilderness Area, two what is now the Special Use Area. One of the first reported sightings was by a rancher and his son as they witnessed it while riding through a canyon on horseback near the eastern slope of Elk Mountain. In another occurrence, three boys in the 1920s were taking a shortcut through the Wichita's on the way to Indiahoma and saw the Iron Door near Mount Pinchot. The final sighting was reported to be in 1996 by a man going from Cooperton to Lawton and he apparently stumbled upon it near Mount Pinchot as well. The commonality in all these stories is that the individuals who witnessed the door were never able to relocate it. Native American lore points to the fact that the door never stays in the same place and it moves around. Did the tribes discover it first and further bury it? Stories passed down relay that tribal law prevented Indian warriors from disclosing the location to the white man. These stories are much better told in native tongue. The Spanish were known to mine the Wichita's in centuries prior, and it's possible that the Spanish left the gold behind from these mid-1700 mining days. Did this cave hold their treasures and even serve as a prison for Indian slaves they forced to mine gold for them? Did the cave conceal millions of dollars of gold and the skeletons of 17 Indians whose spirits now guard the treasures? Another possibility is that it was from the Bell Star freight train robbery in the 1880s. Her gang robbed a train that was transporting mint to Denver and they were rumored to have hidden it in the Wichita's, dragging an iron door with horses all the way back to them. She was ambushed and murdered in 1889. The final possibility was that it was from the infamous James Younger gang robbery of the Mexican Pack Mule Convoy in 1875. The gang ambushed the Mule Pack train and stole over $2 million in gold bars. On their way back, they were rumored to have driven 18 heavily laden burrows through the Wichita Mountains where they were overtaken by a blizzard. And after fording the Cache Creek, they ended up having to ditch the gold in a cave in the side of a canyon. Knowing the rugged and brutal terrain of the Wichita's, it seems unreasonable that horses from the Bell Star freight train robbery could drag a large heavy train door deep into the treacherous landscape of the Wichita's. It's very possible that several different stories have become intertwined and confused with one another. So where did the gold from the mule train pack end up? Jesse James was thought to have stashed gold all over the state of Oklahoma. In March of 1876, Jesse James carved an outlaw contract into the side of a brass bucket. This bucket also provided clues to the location of the gold. Jesse, however, would never come back to claim his gold as he was murdered in 1882. In 1863, the first of the Ison clan came to the Wichita's in the middle of Civil War in Indian territory, which was not open to mining. Despite being run off several times, George Ison staked several claims. A few years later, in 1869, Fort Sill was established, and by 1895, a full-fledged gold rush was underway in the Wichita Mountains. Finally, in 1901, the Indian Reservation was opened to general settlement, and the Wichita Forest Reserve, later called the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, was created. At the same time, George Ison and his son Silas began serious mining operations in what is now Southern Sharon's Garden Wilderness Area. Until 1910, massive amounts of gold prospecting occurred across the Wichita Mountains, and Silas Ison remained in the cabin on the grounds of the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge until he left for a tour of duty in Korea in 1972, and his grandfather's cabin was bulldozed. The foundation is still present to this day. 
the James Younger gang was left in shambles from the failed Northfield, Minnesota bank robbery attempt decades earlier. Cole Younger was arrested, but later paroled after serving a couple of decades of his life sentence. Frank James returned to the Wichitas in 1907, the same year that Oklahoma entered statehood. He found that the land was drastically different as it was plowed, fenced off, due to the settlement a few years earlier. For several years, Frank searched for the remaining treasures that were left behind, and while it was rumored that he did find some caches and wore out several horses in the process, he never found all the stashes. Frank James left Oklahoma for good in 1914 and died a year later. Cole Younger passed away just a year after that in 1916. In 1932, Joe Hunter was approached by a man in Rush Springs and was given three maps. Near modern-day cement at the infamous Buzzard's Roost, Hunter spent years searching from aid of the information given to him. Here, Hunter uncovered rock carvings by the James brothers and an iron kettle that contained gold, jewels, a pocket watch, and a map carved into a copper sheet. A couple of years later, Hunter was given the infamous brass bucket, which was rumored to actually be found by a miner at the base of Tarbone Mountain, just east of Buffalo Spring. Now, there are conflicting reports that he found the bucket versus receiving it from a miner. Hunter also located the remnants of a cabin and the skeleton of a very tall man. While some treasures have been found, there is a strong possibility that the entirety of the stashed treasures remain out there. Treasure, both outlaw and Spanish, have been found in the Wichita Mountains, and it's very possible that more remains out there in caves and crevices that are covered by intense vegetation growth or even falling boulders. I personally believe the chance of this existing in the special use area in the north is much stronger. It's very easy to confuse the names of mountains, as it is quite easy for novice explorers to get disoriented out there. Even with all the technology we are blessed with these days, people still confuse nomenclature. Furthermore, the more a story is told, the more it changes and grows to be more outrageous. Could the cave have been concealed by the building of Treasure Lake or Post Oak Lake? Both of those lakes were deep canyons that were dammed up in 1930s by the Triple C. Maybe the cave had a giant boulder or two fall over the front of the cave prior to construction. I believe this is all simply legend and lore. I don't believe there is an iron door cave anywhere in the Wichita's nor was there ever. If you catch a glimpse of the sun hitting the granite at different times, especially after rain, it can take on the appearance of a shiny iron door. Over the past century, over 10,000 miners, tons of Triple C workers and detectives have failed to find the location of it. Even Silas Eisen himself couldn't find the elusive door after searching for over 70 years. However, it is exciting to think about what has yet to be discovered in the ancient Wichita Mountains. Mm -hmm.